There is one man who strikes fear in the hearts of leaders everywhere. <laughs> that man is Bob Woodward. I have been privileged to know Bob from childhood. For a long time, he's been a living legend to me. Actually, for a long time, I wasn't sure whether Bob was Robert Redford or Robert Redford was Bob. <laughs> Today, Bob really is a legend. He's a legend both for what he accomplished during Watergate, but also for being a prolific and penetrating writer of what my grandfather, Philip Graham, called the first draft of history. Time and again, Bob Woodward pulls together the first comprehensive look at history unfolding and how decisions are made. But back when he started, he was just a schmo like the rest of us. <laughs> Rereading my grandmother's book, I was surprised to learn that Bob turned down Harvard Law School for a career in journalism. Good move. <laughs> he knew what he wanted to do. He so wanted to work for the Post that one editor put Woodward on staff, unpaid, for two weeks to see what he could do. At the end of that tenure, as my grandmother wrote, the editor confidently declared, and I quote, that Woodward was a bright and good guy, but lacked the skills needed for being a newspaper man. <laughs> In short, was hopeless and would be too much trouble to train. The editor told Woodward to go get some experience elsewhere and come back in a year. For most of us, that might have deterred us. We might have gone back to Harvard Law School. Not Bob. He knew then that he loved journalism and was going to come back. And boy, did he come back. But long after Bob became known, not for Watergate, but for the piercing insights of his books, Bob remains a reporter first and foremost. He never fails to come in and report for the paper when a big story breaks and we need all hands on deck. Having helped my grandmother become the publisher that she was, and then helped Don and Bo after that, Bob has been kind enough to take me on as his most recent project. When I first took the helm, Bob invited me over to breakfast at his house. In my 40 odd years, I had never been to breakfast at Bob's house. We had a most elegant breakfast, and then Bob gave me two pieces of advice. I weighed his advice carefully, and then promptly did the exact opposite. A year later, Bob approached me and told me that he had thought about his advice from the prior year and had decided that he was wrong and I was right to have done what I did. That is the kind of gracious man that Bob Woodward is. And as I reviewed my grandmother's book, I can say I was most relieved to see that he has never said to me what he said to my grandmother just a few years after Watergate. And this, mind you, was in the days people refer to today as the heyday of the Washington Post. He said to Kay, and I quote, the paper is going down the shithole. <laughs> so far, he hasn't said that to me, or Marcus, and I'm very grateful. What has amazed me most about Bob is his almost unparalleled work ethic. I started my career as a summer intern at the law firm Williams & Connolly the firm led by the inimitable Brendan Sullivan, the man famously, who famously informed the Congressional Committee investigating Oliver North that he was not a potted plant. As summer interns, our only real exposure to Brendan was a lunch when he talked about the work the firm did and the kind of lawyers they were looking for. One very brave or very stupid intern had the temerity to raise his hand and ask Brendan what he thought about work-life balance. Brendan looked at this kid as if he had just landed from another planet. He paused and then said, every morning I wake at 5.30 and I think to myself, now is the time mine enemy is asleep. <laughs> I think the blood in our little intern veins froze. It turns out though that Bob and Brendan have a lot in common. Just the other night, I was privileged to be at a dinner with Bob. He said this, every morning I wake and I think to myself, what are the bastards trying to hide today? <laughs> True. Most people who hit the pinnacle of their career in their 20s only go downhill from there. While Watergate may have put Woodrun on the map, he was not going to let it define him. It was only his first great work. 
Bob has dedicated his life to explaining and exposing to the American people the inner workings of the people and institutions who hold the power. He even has a reputation with the staff at the White House. Bob was telling me recently that as he was waiting in the White House for one of his interviews recently for the Obama book, a West Wing assistant said to him, you again? <laughs> you are here more than anyone else. What really amazes me is that people still talk to Bob, <laughs> but I've figured it out. Despite all that he has written, Bob has that sweet, almost southern, gentle manner and soft speech that lets you believe that you can get him to see things your way. <laughs> but his most brilliant quality is his ability to listen and use the intensive research he has done to get more out of the story. Bob himself has become such a legend that people want him to record their story because they know that while they may not like it, his reporting will always be full and fair. So I'd like to propose a toast to the legendary Bob Woodward and the great investigative reporting that he has come to personify, to his unfailing dedication to the Washington Post and our commitment to excellence in journalism, and to many more happy years of working together side by side. Thank you.